we are now going to be entering the Isle of Armor portion of this series. I imagine that if this was the actual anime, that this would be an arc lasting around seven or so episodes. Now, as the Isle of Armor is a large story in itself, I've chosen to condense it into this one video. However, there is also going to be a very important announcement at the end of this video, so please stay tuned until the end. Now, please enjoy the Isle of Armor arc. Ash and Gloria take a Corviknight taxi back to Wedgehurst so they can officially head to the Isle of Armor through Wedgehurst Station. Sonya wrote a note that they are meant to head to some dojo once they get there, so they immediately board the train and head to their destination. Once they arrive, not even a few seconds after stepping out of the station, do they run into a couple of arguing trainers with outfits that almost resemble gym uniforms. Ash and Gloria attempt to intervene and the trainers immediately become happy upon seeing them. They say that they must be the new students who were meant to join the Master Dojo. Ash and Gloria say that they are trying to go to a dojo, but attempt to explain the mix-up in that they aren't the newest trainers, but these other two interrupt them. They introduce themselves as Avery and Clara and state that they were sent under the orders of their master, Mustard, to bring the new students back to the dojo. Avery offers to teleport them to the dojo, which he says he can do with his psychic powers. But Clara says that they're supposed to test the new student's strength before they are officially accepted into the dojo. So Clara suggests a tag battle to do just that. Ash and Gloria know that they should probably tell them the truth, but figure it might be better to talk to the people at the actual dojo. So they agree to just go ahead and have the battle. Ash sends out his Farfetch'd and Gloria uses her Thievel. After his gym loss a while ago, Farfetch'd is particularly determined to win to prove himself to his trainer and himself. With fiery eyes, he tells Thievel that he'll protect him in the battle, and the fox smiles happily at his teammate. On the other side, Clara uses her Whirlipede, and Avery uses his Kadabra. Clara and Avery fumble right off the bat, as neither are sure which Pokemon they want to target, so they start arguing about it. This allows Gloria to call for a strong snarl against Kadabra. Meanwhile, Farfetch knocks Whirlipede around using Brutal Swing. Clara and Avery realize they need to get into the battle, so they snap out of their argument, and Clara orders for her Whirlipede to aim a Bug Bite at Thievul. But Farfetch intercepts the attack with his leak without even being axed. Ash and Gloria decide to double up their attacks to get rid of the powerful Kadabra, which they do with a Brutal Swing Lash Out combo. Once Kadabra is knocked out, taking out Whirlipede is effortless. Thievul prepares for a Snarl, but Whirlipede tries for a last ditch steamroller attack. Before Gloria can even command Thievul to dodge, Farfetch jumps in front of him to take the attack once again. In fear of slipping up and his teammate taking a hit, Farfetch decides to land the finishing blow with an unprompted Fury Cutter, taking Whirlipede down. Clara and Avery blame each other for the loss, meanwhile Farfetch proudly thanks Thievul for his assistance. Though he can only stare back with what can only be described as a look of pure confusion, as in the end, the fox felt that he didn't contribute much, since Farfetch pretty much took over the entire battle. Ash praises him for the great battle, telling him that it's great that he shows such concern for his comrades, but he also tells him that he doesn't need to worry about taking control of the entire battle. Farfetch happily salutes his trainer, but Thiefel and Gloria aren't too sure he got the message. Meanwhile, Clara and Avery are furious at their loss, and angrily yank Ash and Gloria over to the dojo to demand they be reprimanded. Well, obviously this doesn't happen, because they really didn't do anything wrong. Instead, Ash and Gloria meet Mustard, his wife Honey, and the dojo students. The dojo master himself and many of the students instantly recognize Ash and Gloria, something which confuses Avery and Clara. One of these students says that Ash and Gloria are among the newest gym challengers and have been everywhere on TV these days, as some of the highest ranked trainers most likely to battle Leon. Clara and Avery are notably shocked by this, and Honey scolds them, wondering how on earth they didn't recognize Ash and Gloria. The duo argue that they didn't look too familiar, so they just assumed they were random trainers, specifically their newest students. Ash explains that they came at the request of Professor Magnolia's granddaughter, Sonia, who wanted them to help with her research. Clara and Avery demand to know then why Ash and Gloria lied to them and said they were new students. And Gloria says that they tried to tell them the truth, but they kept getting interrupted. 
Nevertheless, Ash and Glory are accepted into the dojo by Mustard and even given special uniforms to wear, as he was noted beforehand by Sonya that they would be coming. This makes Clara and Avery angry though, as they don't even have their own uniforms yet. Mustard notes that he was actually planning to give them their uniforms after they returned from their mission, and he prepares to hand them over, but before they can even grab onto them, their uniforms are swiped by a group of strange looking slowpoke. Ash and Gloria are naturally shocked and wonder what's going on, and Mustard said that he's glad they asked, as this is what he has been waiting to announce. He says that the Pokemon they just saw were Galarian Slowpoke, and they're actually part of a set of trials that the dojo students must complete before the day ends. This one being to get the uniforms back from the three Pokemon. Gloria asks what the point of this trial is and how it relates to what Sonya needed them for. Mustard says that all of that will be explained in due time. Meanwhile, he says that their second trial is to find and bring back three Max Mushrooms. Ash asks what Max Mushrooms are, and Honey explains that Max Mushrooms are common around the Isle of Armor and are used to make a special dish called Max Soup. This is a powerful soup that, when fed to a Pokemon, will allow them to Gigantamax. Ash's eyes glimmer when he hears this, as he's wanted to use a Gigantamax Pokemon since he first saw Leon's Gigantamax Charizard, when he first entered Galar. He wants all of his Pokemon to Gigantamax. But Clara butts in and says that not every Pokemon can Gigantamax, and Ash becomes kind of disappointed by this. Meanwhile, Glory asks what the third trial will be. With a spark in his eye, Mustard says that the third trial will be for the first trainers who complete the other trials to battle each other, and the winner will receive the secret armor of the dojo. Ash asks what the secret armor is, and Glory asks if this is what Sonya wanted them to research. Mustard once again says that it will be revealed in time, so they better finish these trials quickly. Ash and Gloria decide to split the tasks up. Ash really wants to use Gigantamax, so he chooses to go search for the mushrooms. Gloria, meanwhile, goes to find the Slowpoke, wanting to train up her Pokemon through some battles anyway, especially since she feels like she barely got to battle in the tag battle earlier. Avery decides that he's going to follow Gloria, while Clara follows Ash, both still angry about their earlier losses and not wanting the new students to get all the praise. Clara guides Ash to the warm-up tunnel, stating that Max mushrooms tend to grow out there. Using his entire team, Ash is able to locate a cluster of Max mushrooms, he asks if it would be enough, but Clara suggests looking for more, so they make their way to the forest to focus, to grab some more mushrooms. Clara winds up spotting some, but while attempting to grab them, she's attacked by a large group of wild Pokemon. Ash tries to fend them off with Drizzile, but she becomes startled by the sheer amount of Pokemon and trips backward in fear. Dracovich decides to charge in and scare the Pokemon away. Clara begrudgingly thanks Ash for helping her. And Ash asks why she's being so distant. He did help her out after all. Clara states that she's strong enough to take care of herself, and that Ash is looking at the poison type gym leader of Galar. Ash is shocked by this since he knows he didn't see Clara at the opening ceremony for the gym challenge. He asks Clara where her gym is, and the girl nervously sighs and admits that she's not exactly a gym leader yet, but she wants to become one. Looking at Clara, Ash never expected that she wanted to become a gym leader, but he supposes that explains why she is so determined to prove herself to Mustard. Despite her earlier rage at him, with Ash being Ash, he wishes her luck in her goal. And Clara does give him a Cinderay thank you. She then asks what was up with Drizzile, and Ash must admit that he is a bit confused by Drizzile becoming so fearful just now. Ever since she evolved, she hadn't had an issue with being scared or crying anymore since when she was a Sobble. Perhaps it was simply the large amount of Pokemon charging at them that scared her. Clara tells Ash that since Drizzle was strong enough to save her, she's got to be a great Pokemon, which Ash agrees on. And so, Clara tells Ash to listen up. She's now deeming him as her newest rival. Meanwhile, Glory and Avery rush around the Fields of Honor, chasing the Galarian Slowpoke who's stolen the uniforms. Glory sends out her entire team to scout out and chase behind the Pokemon, and says they should battle them to get back the uniforms. But Avery levitates her with his psychic powers, which freaks her out by the way, and tells her that he loves Galarian Slowpoke and can't bear the idea of hurting them, so Gloria better think of another idea right now. Gloria doesn't see what the big deal is, but since he's so passionate about this, she suggests that they find a way to quickly take back the uniforms before the Slowpoke can even react. Avery comes up with an idea. He sends out his Kadabra to use its psychic powers to locate the Pokemon and then levitate them in the air. After lowering them down just a little bit, 
Raboot commands her teammates to surround the Glorian Slowpoke. Then she orders Thievil to snatch the uniforms one by one, which he does with his impressive speed, and his new attack, Thief. The Slowpoke are a bit upset at first, but Avery offers them some food, specifically for psychic types, and they cheer up. With the uniforms recovered, Gloria praises Avery for his and his cadaver's impressive psychic powers. Avery gives her a Cinderay thank you and compliments her on her well-trained Pokemon. He can tell her Raboot is a natural leader, along with being very strong, with many battle wins under her belt. Gloria asks how he can tell, and he tells her that he comes from a long line of psychics, and figuring out Pokemon trainer connections is natural to him. Gloria tells him he could become a great trainer with such skills, and Avery reveals that he's actually planning on becoming a psychic type gym leader, hence why he's training at the dojo to improve upon his psychic skills. Gloria tells him that she thinks he'll be a great gym leader and is impressed by his ambitions. Avery genuinely smiles at this and congratulates her. Gloria asks what he's congratulating her for, and he says that she is now worthy enough to be his newest rival. Ash, Clara, Gloria, and Avery return back to the dojo with the max mushrooms and uniforms, and Mustard congratulates the group for returning back before the other students. Clara and Avery, of course, can't help but to claim that they did most of the work in completing the trials. Hey, even if they're acting a bit nicer, they're still Clara and Avery. Gloria tries to protest this, but Mustard seems not to care much either way, simply complimenting all of them for their efforts. Ash gets right to the point and asks if they can make the max soup right away so they can Gigantamax their Pokemon, but Mustard tells him that there's still something else they need to do first. Since four trainers got back at the same time, Mustard then decides that Ash and Gloria will team up to battle against Clara and Avery for the final, last, ultimate, third trial. He allows them to use four Pokemon each and says each team will be allowed to use Dynamax once in the battle. Whichever team wins will receive the secret armor of the dojo. Once the rest of the students return, everyone heads to the large battlefield behind the dojo. Mustard tells both teams to do their best. Clara says that she's happy to be battling Ash as a rival now, and he should be prepared to face her at her full power now. Ash likewise says that he won't hold back. Avery meanwhile tells Gloria that she better give him a good battle, as he expects nothing less from someone he deemed worthy of being his rival. Gloria responds that she'll treat this match like a gym battle, and she tells him to battle her back as a gym leader would. Mustard then tells them they can begin. The battle begins with Ash sending out Farfetch'd and Gloria choosing her Ponyta. Ponyta happily greets Farfetch'd, and he bows in response. Honey finds Farfetch'd's personality endearing, while Mustard states that he's clearly very proud. Ash tells Farfetch'd to battle well, but to not try to take over the fight. On the opposing side, Clara sends out her Skaroopy, and Avery uses his own Ponyta. Clara starts things off by commanding Toxic Spikes, while Avery commands Psychic Terrain. Ash orders Farfetch'd to use Rock Smash on Skaroopy, which knocks it back, and Clara commands a second Toxic Spikes. Gloria has her Ponyta hit Avery's Ponyta with Stomp, and he retaliates with Fairy Wind, but not against the opposing Ponyta. Instead, he aims for Farfetch'd. The fighting type does not take the hit well, and Clara simply gangs up on Ash's Pokemon, commanding a Poison Fang on Farfetch'd. The bird struggles to stand, using his leap to hold his weight. Gloria knows Ash is in trouble, so she has Ponyta use Heal Pulse to heal Farfetch'd. Fully recovered, the chivalrous bird thanks Ponyta and Gloria for their assistance, with a nod, and silently vows to win this for them. With some strength recovered, Farfetch'd hits Avery's Ponyta with a Fury Cutter. Clara commands Groovy to use Bite on Gloria's Ponyta, but as it closes in, Gloria has Ponyta strike back with a point-blank Psybeam, knocking out Skaroopy. Clara seethes over being the first trainer to lose a Pokemon in the battle, but Avery tells her she needs to focus. Clara snaps out of it and sends out her Weezing to replace Skaroopy. Ash commands a second Fury Cutter on Avery's Ponyta, who strikes back with Psybeam. The attack hits Farfetch'd hard, but his Fury Cutter is able to defeat the opposing Ponyta with the added power boost. Farfetch'd smiles proudly at this, pleased that he was able to honor his battle partner by defeating an opponent. Avery is furious that his Ponyta fainted before Glorious, so he brings out his Swoobat. Clara and Avery once again decide to gang up on one Pokemon, so they aim a clear smog and air cutter at Ash's Farfetch'd. Ponyta uses her psychic powers to lift him out of the way at the last second so he avoids the attack. Avery refuses to be outdone, 
So he has Swoobat use its own psychic powers to lift Ponyta up and slam her into the ground. Clara and Avery then aim their double attacks at the fallen Ponyta. She is able to get to her feet and trot a fair distance, but in her weakened state, she winds up slipping over her own hooves. As the attacks near her, Farfetch looks over in horror. He can't bear the thought of his teammate fainting on his watch. He dashes over until he's standing in front of Ponyta. With his wings outstretched and Leek guarding his body, he intercepts both hits, which cause him to fly into the air and slam in front of Ash. Everyone is in awe, and their eyes are on Farfetch, who seems frozen. He tries to get back to his feet, but it's only for a few moments, as the Pokemon falls. Ash picks up the fallen Pokemon and compliments the bird on his hard work, stating that thanks to his efforts, there's no way they can lose this battle. Ponyta goes over to check on Farfetch, saddened that he fainted while protecting her. Ash tells her that everything will be fine, and he calls out Carcoal, who is immediately poisoned badly by the toxic spikes. But before he can even become angry over this, because let's all be honest, we all know that's what his response would be. In an instant, the poison is cured by Ponyta's poison heal ability. Carcoal smiles at his teammate, and Ponyta is happy she could assist her friend. Furious, Clara demands to know why Avery didn't warn her about this ability earlier, and he yells back that it wouldn't have mattered had Farfetch not ruined their attempt to take out Ponyta before Carcoal came out. During the commotion, Ash commands a heat wave attack to hit both opponents. They both take big damage, but Avery and Clara snap out of their argument to get back into the battle. Swoobat takes hold of Ponyta with confusion, and Weezing hits it with a super effective assurance attack, taking her down. Gloria is disappointed, but she sends an Arctizole, who immediately becomes poisoned, but commands Icicle Crash anyway. Swoobat attempts to dodge, but the giant icicles are just too massive. Swoobat winds up fainting from the huge hit. Angrily, Avery sends out his Kadabra and uses Psybeam to attack Arctazolt. This causes Arctazolt to become confused. Ash realizes that they're in trouble, as Arctazolt is both confused and poisoned. Not a great combination. He has Carcoal use Smackdown on Weezing. Weezing attempts to use Sludge to intercept the attack, but in the end, Carcoal is able to fire off his attack much quicker, so he defeats Weezing. Next to the battlefield is Clara's Whirlipede. She commands Poison Tail onto Arctazolt. Gloria commands a Bolt Beak, but sadly, the fossil Pokemon fires off a Freeze Try at Carcoal instead of attacking the opponents in this confused state. Ash and Gloria panic as they both know what's coming. Carcoal begins fuming, the rocks on his back burning in a huge flame, and in his rage, he slams his body into Arctazolt. The Pokemon is knocked back into the ground, and the combination of this and the poison is just too much, and she winds up fainting. Ash scolds Carcoal and apologizes to Gloria, but she says that it's her fault for trying to command the confused Pokemon instead of calling it back. She sends an Appleton next, and she also becomes badly poisoned. And speaking of all this poison, Carcoal is starting to struggle as well, and Ash knows he won't last much longer. Kadabra hits another Psybeam at Carcoal, and Ash retaliates with a Rock Slide. Carcoal's attack hits both opponents, knocking Kadabra out, leaving Avery with one Pokemon left. But Carcoal falls from the Psybeam and the poison damage as well. Appleton hits Whirlipede with a Dragon Pulse, but Clara commands a super effective Bug Bite in return, and both Pokemon take huge damage. Avery brings out his strongest Pokemon, a Galarian Slowbro. With the Psychic Terrain boosting his attack, he hits Appleton with a very strong Confusion, which, you guessed it, confuses her. Ash brings out his Dracovish and commands Crunch on Slowbro, but Clara has Whirlipede use Poison Tail to intercept Dracovish and stop his attack. Avery also uses Shell Side Arm on Appleton, who takes heavy damage. Trying to play it a bit safe this time, Gloria commands Recover, and surprisingly, Appleton actually uses the move and doesn't hurt herself. Ash commands Fishius Rend on Whirlipede, which finally takes the bug out. So Clara now sends in her own Glarian Slowbro, and Ash and Gloria are surprised to see that they both own the same Pokemon. Clara and Avery decide that it's best to use their strongest Pokemon to quickly defeat their opponents, so Avery uses Confusion to take control of Dracovish. The fossil Pokemon freaks out over being levitated into the air and tries to break free. But Clara follows up with a Shell Side Arm, a combo which takes Dracovish down. With her teammate fainted, Gloria decides to try another attack. She commands Apple Acid, but Appleton just misses all of her attacks, and a double Shell Side Arm from the two Slowbro take her out. The original Psychic Terrain fades at this point. Now, Everyone is down to their last Pokemon. Ash brings out Drizzile and Gloria Harabut, who both instantly become badly poisoned. The Slowbro glare angrily at their opponents, and Drizzile quivers in fear. 
Again? Why has Drizzle become fearful again? She freaked out earlier when she was outnumbered when trying to get the max mushrooms. So maybe this is what's bothering her? Perhaps having to deal with multiple foes intimidates her? Her boot steps in front of her reptilian friend and glares right back at the slowbro, which causes them to shudder slightly. Ash calls out to Drizzle and tells her not to be afraid since she's not alone. She'll have Raboot to back her up. Drizzle looks to Raboot and then to Ash and nods back at both of them. Raboot also gives her friend a thumbs up. Avery commands a water pulse against Raboot and the attack does huge damage. Raboot counters with Blaze Kick, which burns Avery's Slowbro. Ash commands Water Pledge against Clara's Slowbro, but it counters with Shell Sidearm. At this point, Mustard reminds the trainers that they are free to use one Dynamax per team if they wish. Ash and Gloria look at each other and nod. Gloria calls back her Raboot and Dynamaxes her. When Avery sees that Gloria is the one Dynamaxing, he decides to be the one to Dynamax on his side without consulting Clara, which of course has her yelling angrily at him. He ignores her, however, and commands a Max Geyser, but Gloria intercepts it with Max Flare. The combination of attacks making the entire arena foggy. Using this fog, Ash commands Drizzle to turn invisible and then to attack Clara Slowbro. Clara freaks out as her Pokemon is hit with a barrage of attacks from a now unseen opponent. Avery decides to use a Max Mindstorm, which hits Raboot hard and creates a new psychic terrain. Raboot attacks with Max Knuckle to increase her physical attack power. Clara, meanwhile, is still defenseless against the invisible Drizzle, but she knows the poison must be taking its toll on Drizzle and Raboot. Since Raboot is the clearer target, Clara commands a Water Pulse. However, Drizzle intercepts it with her swift attack, and she's able to hit both Slowbro. Avery Slowbro uses Max Ooze, and Raboot uses a Max Flare, and the attacks collide with a powerful explosion. Drizzle uses Protect to shield herself from these attacks, while Clara Slowbro gets caught in the crossfire. Then, the Dynamax Pokemon return to their normal size. All the Pokemon are weakened, even Drizzle, who was still able to take some damage despite using Protect. So, Ash commands Drizzle to use a Water Bomb against Clara's Slowbro. Meanwhile, Gloria commands Raboot to shoot fire from the soles of her feet at Avery Slowbro. The water bomb bursts into Clara Slowbro's eyes, blinding her vision in an instant. Meanwhile, the fire attacks from Raboot worse than the other Slowbro's burn. A final water pledge takes out Clara Slowbro, while Double Kick defeats Avery's. Ash and Gloria are the winners of the match. The students cheer and praise them. Drizzle and Raboot hug each other, and then... After the battle, Drizzle and Raboot evolve into Inteleon and Cinderace. Finally, the two Pokemon that Ash and Glory receive from Leon are fully evolved, and they've caught up with Hop. Ash and Glory are beyond happy, as are the Pokemon themselves. Ash tells Inteleon that surely she'll never be afraid in battle anymore. Meanwhile, Gloria tells Cinderace that she'll be an even better team leader now. Clara and Avery, on the other hand, are pretty upset, and each blame the other for the loss. Meanwhile, Mustard congratulates everyone for an awesome battle. He then specifically approaches Clara and Avery and tells them that they've proven their strength well in these past few days and thinks they've earned the right to be considered on par with minor league gym leaders. This shocks the duo as they never expected to hear this. Mustard tells them that he'll look into getting them evaluated as gym leaders very soon, which has Clara and Avery beyond thrilled. They rush over to shake hands with their respective rivals, thanking them for allowing them to prove their strength to their dojo master. Ash sheepishly tells them that it was no problem, and Gloria adds in that they can work even better as trainers if they simply stop arguing so much. The gym leaders in training agree to work better together from now on. As a reward for winning, Ash and Gloria will be awarded the secret armor of the dojo. Ash is more curious than ever, wondering what this will be. Mustard answers this question by pulling out a Pokeball. He releases the Pokemon inside, and it turns out to be a very small brown Pokemon they've never seen before. As soon as the Pokemon sees Pikachu on Ash's shoulder, it rushes over to attack. But Pikachu uses a single Iron Tail to put the Pokemon in its place, and it quickly becomes embarrassed over failing that attack. 
Mustard introduces the Pokemon as Cub Fu and states that she is very boisterous and as they can see, she really likes to show off. But she's really not that strong yet. He says that this will be the Pokemon they'll research for Sonya. Specifically, she wants to study its evolution and its Gigantamax form. Ash thinks Cub Fu looks cool enough, but he's especially excited upon hearing that it has an evolution with a Gigantamax form. He wants to see it as soon as possible. So, Mustard gives Ash and Gloria their next trial. This mission is to evolve Cub Fu. Ash becomes excited immediately, saying he's ready to start training, but Mustard stops him as he explains that the evolution can only be achieved by taking Cub Fu through one of two different locations on the Isle of Armor. He tells them that the locations are called the Towers of Two Fists, with one being named the Tower of Darkness and the other being the Tower of Waters. Gloria asks if this means its evolution has two forms, and Mustard confirms it, saying the evolution will be either Water or Dark type, depending on which tower they evolve Cub Fu at. But this means that they can only choose one location, so they'll have to choose wisely. But for now, they should simply work on training Cub Fu. Clara and Avery jump in and say that they'll help their new friend rivals as well with training Cub Fu. So, let's get started. After a few days of training, Ash and Gloria deem Cub Fu as ready for the next step of their trial. The duo stand in front of the dojo with Clara and Avery. In the distance, they can see two giant towers, assuming them to be the towers Mustard spoke about. Without much knowledge on either location, Ash and Gloria decide to ask Clara and Avery which they think they should evolve Cub Fu at. But of course, they should have known this was a bad idea, as the two begin arguing as they usually do. With their only other assistants arguing at the moment, they decide to go ahead and ask their Pokemon what they think. All of the Pokemon look back and forth between each tower. Inteleon proudly points to the Tower of Waters, and Dracovish loudly wails in agreement at this choice. Though Karkul angrily bounces around and shoots flames from his back to reject this suggestion. Meanwhile, Thievil aims a paw in the direction of the Tower of Darkness, a choice which has Ponyta shivering. Corviknight nods his head in the same tower's direction, and Cinderace points to both towers every so often. Appleton and Alchemy are asleep, barely paying attention, and Arctazol indecisively stares into space. Dracovish is too busy patrolling the area to make a choice, and Pikachu is at a loss. He simply stands next to Kapu, who is currently practicing her bunches. With their Pokemon's choices presented, sort of, Ash decides that he wants to go Kapu at the Tower of Waters, but Glory wants to go to the Tower of Darkness. Avery actually sides with Ash here, as he's not a fan of dark types. So, naturally, Clara supports Gloria, since she just has to oppose Avery. The quartet soon begin arguing, all together, no different than Clara and Avery have been doing on their own the past few days. Annoyed, Pikachu delivers a thunderbolt to the entire group and calls out a suggestion in Pika speak. In the end, they all agree. They allow Cub Fu to decide on her own. Cub Fu looks back and forth between each tower. She closes her eyes and only hears the sounds of waves of the ocean behind her. With an intense fierceness, she opens her eyes and points to the Tower of Waters. The choice is made, so Ash and Glory decide that they'll make their way over. Clara and Avery wish them luck, letting them know that they'll be cheering for them from the safety of the dojo. The kids reach the Tower of Waters and are told they need to battle their way to the top. Ash, Gloria, and Kabu are ready for the challenge, 
so they begin ascending the tower. They face many trainers along the way, but Kofu is able to defeat all of them. Once they get to the top, they are surprised when they encounter Mustard, Clara, and Avery. Glory asks what they're doing there, and Mustard informs them that they've nearly completed their mission. Now they just have to battle him as Kung Fu's special challenge. Ash asks why the other two are there since he thought they were staying back at the dojo. Clara says that Mustard actually offered for them to accompany him to watch the battle, and who are they to say no to him? Avery adds that they wanted to see the fruits of their labor. They helped train Kung Fu, so they want to see if she'll be able to beat Mustard. With all of the explanations out of the way, Mustard asks which of the two students will be commanding Kung Fu. Gloria says that she will, since just like Avery, she wants to ensure Kung Fu is ready to evolve. So Mustard walks over to the battlefield. Avery yells at Gloria, demanding that she win this battle. If she beat him, she better defeat the dojo master as well. And Gloria says that she definitely plans to win this. Gloria tells Kung Fu to get ready to battle, and she and Ash are shocked when Mustard sends out his own Kung Fu. Gloria immediately can sense how strong the opposing Kung Fu is, but she knows that she and Ash worked hard on training their Kung Fu, so she goes in with confidence. Gloria starts out strong with several rock smash attacks, and immediately Kung Fu's speed allows her to get several hits in. But things aren't easy, as Mustard's Kung Fu knows aerials, which deals super effective damage. Gloria tries to command Kung Fu's strong brick brick attacks, but Mustard's Kung Fu just seems to be more physically defensive. Gloria commands numerous rock smash attacks to lower the opposing Kung Fu's defenses, which does work, but Mustard continues to command powerful attacks like Dynamic Punch to seriously hurt and confuse Gloria's Kung Fu. Ash, Clara, and Avery cheer for Kung Fu, rooting for her to do well, but still, all hope seems lost, as Kung Fu can barely land any attacks in her confusion. Mustard says that clearly they haven't trained well enough, and he tells his Kung Fu to finish things with close combat. But right at the last second, Gloria turns the tables by commanding a revenge attack. Her Kung Fu snaps out of confusion, and the attack lands, easily beating her opponent, as she'd been weakened so much. After the victory, Mustard praises everyone, saying that they did well, and Kung Fu has clearly earned the right to evolve. He directs Gloria and Kung Fu to the scroll of waters behind him. Gloria offers the scroll to the small bear. Kung Fu touches the scroll, and she instantly evolves into what Mustard calls her rapid strike style evolution. Clara admires the amazing evolution, saying that it looks really cool. Meanwhile, Avery doesn't seem as impressed, as he suddenly remarks that he's just glad that it wasn't the dark type evolution. Mustard praises Ash and Gloria, and says that along with Clara and Avery, they should return back to the dojo now. Avery asks the dojo master if he'll be returning with them, and Mustard says that he has some business to attend to before he can return, but he'll be back soon enough. But for now, they can help Honey prepare the Mac soup. The students are a bit confused, but agree to listen to Mustard, and they make their way back to the dojo. After all, Ash is excited to finally get that Mac soup for his Pokemon. Back at the dojo, Urshifu is enjoying her new evolved form, and she practices sparring with Ash and Gloria's Pokemon. Once nighttime strikes, Mustard finally returns, and right at this moment, Honey brings out some Max soup for Urshifu, saying that it's her reward for passing her test. Urshifu eats the soup and begins glowing intensely. Mustard smiles, and after this, he asks Ash and Gloria for one final battle. Ash leaps up and says he's ready to battle right now. He wants to battle with a Gigantamax Pokemon, one he'd help train. Mustard laughs, admiring Ash's fiery spirit. He says that he reminds him of Leon and invites him to the battlefield. The battle will simply be a one-on-one, -on -one, and Ash, of course, has Urshifu get right into the battle. Mustard smiles and sends out his own Urshifu, which shocks everyone. They don't even know when Mustard evolved his Kung Fu, but Gloria and Avery realize it must have been just now before he returned back to the dojo. But they notice that this Urshifu looks different. Mustard can see that the students are confused, and he explains that this is the other evolution for Urshifu, the single strike style, the form their Urshifu would have evolved had they taken her to evolve at the Tower of Darkness. Gloria thinks that this Pokemon looks really strong, but she has her faith in the Urshifu they trained. Clara calls out to Ash, telling him that she won't accept anything other than a clean win from him, and Ash responds, telling her that he and Urshifu will win easily after all the hard work they've put in. Mustard starts with a Wicked Blow attack, which easily knocks Rapid Strike Urshifu back. 
Mustard tells Ash that this is a special move, unique to this form of Urshifu. Ash checks his Rotom Pokédex phone to see if his own Urshifu has a special move, and it seems she does. So Ash decides to try it out. He commands Urshifu's new Surging Strikes move. The giant bear pummels the opposing Urshifu with a barrage of punches, which knocks it backward. The single strike Urshifu collects himself to strike back, but Ash's Urshifu lands another series of punches no sooner than she finished the first assault. The attack knocks Mustard's Urshifu back, but he's still standing strong. Rapid Strike Urshifu lands one more aquatic pummeling, which has Single Strike Urshifu falling to his knees. Everyone is confused, but also impressed. And Mustard is the one who explains that Surging Strikes allows the Pokemon to attack three times, and it always lands as a critical hit. The two of them were lucky in that they chose to evolve their Urshifu into this form. Avery pipes up and smugly says that it was all his idea, but he goes mostly ignored. Mustard decides that he's ready to unleash Urshifu's full power and wants to see the same from Ash. It's time to go all out. The Dojo Master Gigantamaxes his Urshifu, and Ash excitedly decides to do the same. He's been waiting for this moment since they started on this quest. Both Urshifu grow into their Gigantamax forms, and naturally, Ash, Gloria, and all of the students are in awe of the different Gigantamax Urshifu. But Gloria yells at Ash to not get distracted. Clara and Avery cheer for the giant Cerulean bear, telling her to give it her all. Mustard commands a G-Max one blow, and the huge attack seems to do major damage. But Ash's Urshifu is able to remain standing. Ash orders a G-Max rapid flow. Firing off another powerful series of aquatic punches, Ash's Urshifu does heavy damage to Mustard's. A final water-coated kick is able to successfully defeat Mustard's Urshifu. The Pokemon return to their normal sizes and everyone celebrates Ash's victory over the Dojo Master. Ash praises Ash, Gloria, Clara, and Avery for raising Kofu so well, and right at this moment, a voice calls out to them. It's Sonya, and she lets them know that she finally got some free time to meet them on the Isle of Armor. Mustard tells Sonya that the kids did great in their mission, and Urshifu is now able to Gigantamax. Clara and Avery of course try to claim that they provided a lot of assistance in training Urshifu, far more than they actually did. Sonya ignores the exaggerated tales of Clara and Avery waking up at the crack of dawn to constantly train Urshifu for days upon days in a row, and instead thanks all of them, telling them that she can't wait to study Urshifu, as she feels like it might have some connection to the heroes of Galar. But even if not, it'll be great to learn more about Gigantamax. Everyone has a big celebratory dinner, while Mustard prepares a final meal for everyone. Ash of course asks if there's any more Max soup left, but Honey says that Urshifu ate nearly all of it, and there's only a little left. Glory asks how much exactly is left, and Honey says it's enough for two small Pokemon. Ash and Gloria think for a bit and ask if they can give some soup to Pikachu and Alchemy. Mustard and Honey agree, and they give the Pokemon the remainder of the soup. Immediately upon eating, the Pokemon begin to glow, and Mustard explains that they've gained the Gigantamax factor. Glory is excited as she remembers Opal's Gigantamax Alchemy, and she can't wait to send hers into battle. Meanwhile, Ash is thrilled that Pikachu is actually able to Gigantamax. He's so happy to finally have a Pokemon that can Gigantamax, and is eager to see what a Gigantamax Pikachu will actually look like. Before leaving, Clara and Avery tell Ash and Gloria that they'll be watching their future gym matches, and they'll look forward to seeing them in the league. Clara bets that Ash will be the one to battle Leon, but Avery insists that it'll be Gloria, and naturally, the two can't help but to begin arguing again. Gloria rolls her eyes, while Ash tells them that he looks forward to seeing them again and having another battle. Clary says that he better be. After all, the next time they see them, they'll be gym leaders, no doubt. The quartet shake hands, and Ash and Gloria exit the dojo with their Pokemon. Sonya lets them know that she'll meet them back in Galar soon, but for right now, she's going to take some time to finally study Urshifu. A Corviknight taxi arrives for the trainers, and they bid the dojo members farewell, everyone waving to each other as they all part ways. Hello, hello everyone, and I hope you enjoyed this Isle of Armor training arc. I really must say that I enjoyed writing it myself. That said, there is something really important that I must talk about right now. I realized that while writing this very arc that I've accidentally been neglecting a huge factor of this series, and that would be movies. The Pokemon anime is known for its movies, and they tend to have a few in each series. Now, Journeys was different in that there was only one movie, the Zaru movie, called the um, Pokemon the movie Coco. Granted, I think we can all figure out that that, let's call it the Volcarona bug, had something to do with that. 
However, I think I might be the only person out there who feels that even without Volcarona, Journeys may not have had any other movies. I mean, not unless they were movies focusing on random plots like the Sun and Moon era movies, because honestly, there isn't really anything else Gen 8 related they could have done. Sun and Moon did at least have Marshadow and Zero Aura to work with in those movies. But aside from Zerud, what else could be done with Gen 8? I mean, I don't think Zatsuki and Zamazenta and Eternatus really needed a movie. Uh, the only thing I could think of would be the Crown Tundra story, but sadly they didn't do that. So long story short, Journeys only had that one movie. We, on the other hand, have had no movies, and that is primarily my fault, I admit it. I really just hadn't thought too much about the movie aspect of this series while writing out this 100 plus page script, but that changes right now. Now, of course, most of the first movies for a series occur really close to the beginning at around two or three badges. Unfortunately, we are a tad late as we're over halfway through the badge journey, so that's gonna mean that we're gonna have to be rearranging a few things. Sorry about that, that's again my fault, but it's just something we have to deal with. So first things first, I'm gonna say that the very first movie in Sakura's Pokemon Sword and Shield series will be called Secrets of the Jungle, Zarud and Coco. And the plot will pretty much be exactly the same, nearly exactly the same as the canon Zarud movie. Just replace the AU Ash with our Ash, add Glory and all of their Galar Pokemon, and we're good. Now, I say all of their Pokemon, but it's not actually going to be all the ones they have up until this point. Because actually, the actual placement of this movie, it's going to have to be taking place around the events of Part 3. Probably around the very beginning of Part 3. Around that portion, Ash's team would have been Pikachu, Sable, Corvusquire, and Rolly Coley. Whereas Glorious would have been Scorbunny, Nicket, Applin, and Mosery. Those seem pretty fitting for a first movie to me. They don't have a full team yet, and they don't really have any evolutions aside from Cobra Squire for Ash. So I think this will be a good spot for it. But you guys can let me know in the comments. But as for right now, that's where I'm going to say that this first part, this first movie will take place. So now that we've placed our first movie in the timeline, we only have one thing left to address. We're going to need to have a second movie, which should probably be occurring between parts 5 and 6. This will give us a movie where Ash and Gloria have Drizzle and Raboot, along with some more evolved Pokemon and larger teams. The only issue is, like I said, what would this movie be about? I personally want to save the Crown Tundra for the very end, so the last thing left over would be the Darkest Day plot. But here's my question, do you guys think that should be a movie? I plan on doing a multi-episode arc for that, kind of similar to this Isle of Armor, very much like how it was in the actual Sword and Shield, I mean, um, in the actual Journeys series. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think I should add, like, a prequel movie of sorts? A movie that would address the events of the Darkest Day and give more focus on Eternatus and Rose before the actual Darkest Day arc would take place during the series complex? I mean, I won't lie, I think that would be pretty great. It would give much more need to focus to Rose. I won't lie, I know I haven't showed that much of Rose, but again, I also blame the Sword and Shield games for this because Rose was kind of pushed off until the very end. I've been trying to do a lot in incorporating him more, but I know that even I've been slacking with that, so I mean, hey, I think maybe adding a movie to take place before this actual climax would happen would be great. So let me know. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. Do you guys think we should add a movie focusing on the Darkest Day plot? Kind of like a prequel to the eventual climax that would occur during the end, during the League events? Again, let me know in the comments. But with all that being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this part and enjoy your day. Thank you!